Where life is full of suffering, its causes are desire. Nirvana is the end of it, extinguishing the fire. To reach the end of suffering, we walk the Eightfold Path. Right view is the first step, meditation is the last. Namaste. Well, I've been hinting here lately about a big announcement, and so uh, I guess I'd better get around to it and <laughs> come right out with it. But I need to give you a little history first. Back when I was a wild young kid, tooling around California in my van with my amplified sax and flute in the back uh -huh. and other stuff. <laughs> I met this crazy lady who was half Native American. And one thing led to another. We wound up getting married and she was, you know, half Navajo Indian. So she says to me, let's go see my homeland. Let me show you what my background is all about. And we know who you are. You're typical white male. <laughs> Privileged white male, right? With first world problems. Now you come and see how the rest of the world lives. So she took me to New Mexico, which was eye-opening first because I had never seen such vistas, such a physical landscape of immensity, you know, just vastness and the vast sky and all. It was mind-blowing. And then to go down to the Navajo Reservation and see the authentic ceremonies going on, this was another revelation. This is like my God, these people get it. They, they have a natural connection with the earth, like I feel, you know, after taking LSD and whatnot. <laughs> I, what can I say, you know? I think it's valid. I think it's valid that if you come to an awareness, it doesn't matter how you got there, but it's important not to be intoxicated, too intoxicated, uh, emotionally or mentally, as well as physically, so that you recognize it and value it for what it is. And I valued my insight because I had grown up, grown up a city boy. Uh, after being born in beautiful Clearwater, Florida, I had to grow up in New Jersey, and it was awful. Yeah, it was crappy. So, uh, out in California, I had a much more natural life, sleeping out in the redwoods in state parks and stuff like that, back when you could still do it, with relatively no hassle. And uh, so I met this lady, we went to New Mexico, we went to the res, we got down on the res, and I did all the ceremonies, including the so-called sweat lodge, which is actually the stone people's ceremony. Uh, and uh, uh, the sun dance, uh, which is actually called the sun walk, even though it's round and around a pole. I still have the scars, if anyone is interested. But uh, I did all the ceremonies and uh, they were the ones who told me, you know, the earth is dying because of what industrial civilization is doing, stuff like this. They were the first ones to like clue me in. So they have this art, this warrior tradition called Kadoshka. And Kadoshka is handed down mostly through grandmothers and grandfathers. Grandmother, grandmother, take her girls and tell talk story, 
or a grandfather will take two boys out in the woods, show them what to do, survival conditions, uh, and show them how to be a man, how to be a warrior. So uh, I went on a few of these vision quests, as they're called, and uh, I had a few experiences that were just, you know, out of this world. <laughs> out of this world. I said, I want to live like this. I don't want this just to be a phase, you know. I want to live like this. Well, then, you know, I would have to take the training of Kadoshka priest. And that involves a lot of ritual and learning Navajo language and all this. But no, 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 no. No, you don't understand. <laughs> I just connect directly, intuitively with Great Spirit on doing any of this stuff. Just hearing the chanting, it doesn't matter. It's the intent behind it. It's the consciousness that I was interested in. But anyway, uh, we wound up parting ways and stuff like that. But the important thing was I got that art. That art, which is like Tantra. Like Tantra, it seeks to open the lower chakras completely and experience your full energy, the full power of your body, uh -huh. to experience things, to have sensations. Okay? And this turns on the, the faucet, you know, the flow of creative energy to the higher chakras, for things like meditation, enlightenment, love, you know, all these wonderful benefits of, of uh, civilized cultivation of spiritual life. But people claim they have no time because they have to work or whatnot or this or that, you know, okay, but well, whatever. I got into it. And, you know, I did the sweats and I did the peyote out in the wilderness. And, and surprisingly, there's a lot of, how can I say it, ordeals. They're, in the lingo of the tribe, they're called sacrifices. Uh, but what they are is an ordeal where you voluntarily take some physical discomfort right, to prove a point. And, and the point to yourself is that However uh, deep or strict it is, you can deal with it, you can handle it, you can overcome it, whatever it is. Right? And the other thing, of course, is to condition your body. Because we don't know, we, we never know when things are going to get tough. And everybody, you know, in life goes through certain difficult times. And if we have those inner resources of knowing we can deal with it, then it really helps us to get through those times without, you know, losing it. <laughs> so it's a very practical thing as well. And also it's a warrior tradition. It's a warrior tradition. So it ultimately deals in military strategy and, uh, and war. And I mean, you know, people hurt people in war. It's a real thing. So and how do you deal with that? Or how do you deal with that pain? So it's a progressive series of more and more intense physical experiences that leads to full opening or full, full utilization of the body's powers. And this is what we're after. Huh? We're not doing it for its own sake. We're certainly not doing it on, for the sake of the body. But we're using the body to create a certain energy state in which the higher chakras can open. And which, in which one can become aware of the real self, the real essence, consciousness, or even deeper, pure awareness. Pure awareness just experiences, it doesn't judge. Uh, it's pure sensation without thinking, oh, this is good, this is bad. But just fully experiencing whatever is. 
And this is something that you learn through this kind of yoga. Well, a few years later, I met someone who was really my first guru. And that was Mrs. Yu. Mrs. Yu taught Shaolin Qigong. And in the old traditional way of standing, just standing in a certain posture. The legs are slightly bent, the back is very straight, uh, the arms are up in some configuration. We'll get into this later, the details. But anyway, this has the effect of supercharging your prana. So, I found that it fit perfectly with what I had already done in Kadoshka. And indeed, I found a common energy space between them. Huh? But it's very difficult to reach. Again, Qigong comes from a warrior subculture. So the religious people, the monks, and the religious householders, they try to suppress sexual energy because they can't deal with the wildness of it. Huh? It, just, it just blows up their whole little trip, you know, <laughs> to bring out such powerful energies. But let's say you have experience with these energies and you know how to handle them because of a martial arts background and stuff like this, right? And you know how to set things up so that it's safe to blow off that much energy. Then you get into a situation where you have the possibility to use various kinds of stimulation, right? Uh, like, almost like, is a yoga almost like acrobatics. Uh, did you ever notice the people on the trapeze, swinging on the trapeze, you know, and what, how much good shape they're in. Did you ever notice this? Well, <laughs> I got into something related to that, which is from the Qigong background and from the Kadoshka background, that brings your body into its natural uh, top physical condition and capacity for all kinds of things, <laughs> whatever you want. So uh, I've been practicing these arts. I'm getting back into it now. Uh, it's because I'm thinking of coming to the West and I want to share these arts in the West. Uh, I'm also open to anybody who wants to come and like assist me because the, the workouts I can do solo are, are certainly good and beneficial. But if I had an assistant to help with setup and stuff like that, I could be doing so much more. So uh, I'm talking with one young fellow from England right now about that. So I thought I would also make that available to everybody else who's following these discussions here. <laughs> that this Kadoshka and Qigong uh, technique, I think should be available. It helped me very much to set up for my success in meditation later on. And I often feel that Mrs. Yu, my Qigong teacher, uh, who was the wife of a very advanced uh, Zen meditation teacher, he had been a monk for some time and then disrobed and she married him. And so she knew everything about Zen and meditation too. I think she planted a seed in me that later on fructified into uh, first path, second path, third path and all that. And, and the other things, you know, the other realizations. <laughs> too numerous to even catalog. I stopped keeping score, you know, a long time ago when I, it became clear that this is going to be your path and you're going to really experience all these things and uh, find uh, reliable keys to ecstasy, you know, 
That's what it's really about. So if that interests you, get in touch with me through the comments or through my email, and uh, let's talk about that because uh, really I can use help on a number of levels, including online and so on and so forth. So get in touch with me, okay? Om Tat Sat Om Hari Om Buddha Saranai. Yeah. <laughs>